Whenever I travel, people talk about what a wonderful and special Detroit Jewish community we have. Clearly, it's special. One of the things that helps to make it special has been the Jewish news, which has told the stories, it's captured the stories of this community. It's helped to shape, in many ways, some of the most significant uh, and important outcomes our community has had. Everybody knows each other, or they think they should. The way that I learned Detroit when I first came to Detroit was through the Jewish news. It was really the way I learned who was connected to who. I read voraciously and took notes on the births, the deaths, the engagements, the marriages, um, because that was the way I could see who was connected to who. I can remember, and I know many others did this this way. My mother did it. I did it as well, we read from the back. It became almost like a textbook. I learned a tremendous amount about our community and about the Jewish people in general by reading the Jewish news every single week. The Jewish news was ultimately born because Phil Slomovitz and those who came with him and before him had a passion for Israel, for a Jewish state. Well, Bill loved the story of the championship in 2004. There's no getting around that. When you win a championship, everybody loves you. And I'll never forget one little boy was quoted as saying, I knew we were going to win. We had Rashid Wallace. And um, he's like, yes. <laughs> but it was he enjoyed reading the comments of the fans and, uh, and the fact that the Jewish news gave it such a special um, special accolades, if you will. But he also loved reading about the stories of what's going on in Israel and how the Jewish community was supporting activities and nuts and bolts in the, in the country. My favorite all-time Jewish news cover was when Max Fisher, Alva Sholem, died. And I just think that he was such an icon of the Detroit Jewish community and I thought the picture of him, the whole inside of the Jewish news about Max Fisher and his family was outstanding. Virtually every week we're creating a cover that means something not just to the community but to a family, to an individual, uh, to somebody who loves Israel, to somebody who cares about social justice. When we ourselves were on the cover is the Jewish news and that's when our building burned down in late January of 2002. The community voiced its concern about us. They wanted to know, first of all, was anybody hurt? No. Were we out of business? Fortunately, we had off-site backup. And then people said, well, what were those things we saw in the window from the television reports that looked like bound volumes of your paper, surrounded by water and smoke? And people were saying, that's our history. What are you doing to protect it? So it was really that cover for what led in 2011 to the creation of the Detroit Jewish News Foundation and the initiative to protect in perpetuity that very content that people cared so much about. I always encourage people who have any interest and they're involved in the Jewish community, you must go to the William Davidson Archive. You're going to read whatever happened two days ago, five days ago, 20 years ago, it's all there. I always ask Bill about his bar mitzvah and he goes, I had seven layer cake. I was like, that's it? <laughs> but he was able, but I was able to go to the Jewish News Archives and I read about his little, it was a little paragraph, but he, the date he got bar mitzvah and it was, I mean, that's special. People who get involved in the community often want to take a look at what happened in the past and what kinds of problems were in the community in the past and how the problems were solved. It was often at very early hours in the morning before I went to work, I would spend time on the archives searching through their both my father's name, Mark Schlossel, and his father, Urban Schlossel's name, in culling articles that I felt were significant enough to compile into a book. The beauty of the archives is it gives you a very easy way to compile on a much larger scale the impact that those incremental moments had 
And you can look back and say, with some astonishment, I really did make a significant change on this community, although at the time, it might not have felt that way. Our family's been in Detroit for over 100 years. So uh, in terms of generations living here, we are fifth generation Detroit Jews. At this point, Detroit's home. I had always known that my grandfather was involved in the 1948 campaign, which, which was incredible to help the fledgling Jewish community of pre-state Israel, Palestine, try to organize. I went back into the Jewish News Archives, and there it was in print, Leonard Baruch, chairman of the Jewish Young Council. Uh, it was just so inspiring to see because I've always known this is what my family prioritized. This is how we were raised generations back. But to see it right there in print, it made it real for me. The legacy I hope to leave is that, is that myself, the foundation, the family, we did all we could to continue the history of the Jewish community in Detroit, and at the same time encouraging others to help support it and build it up. Every time I think about Bill's involvement in Israel, it really comes home when I hear from a kid that went on birthright. They all go to the Davidson Center. What a, what a legacy for him. What I see and what I hope my legacy has been is that I've been able to both capture the story of this community and the story of every family. When you have 330,000 pages of content going back more than 100 years, there's virtually something about everyone in there. This is about preserving everyone's legacy. The Jewish News is committed to telling our story, to retaining its reputation for credibility and trust. And if you want that information in print, we'll get it to you in print. If you want that information digitally, we'll get it to you digitally. Our challenge, and we need your help and your support as people who care about this community, as people who understand the role of the Jewish news, that in the end, we're telling your story, our community's story, and we need to do it in a way that you want to receive it.